How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 2. Change is never easy. Anon walks back into the store and closes the door behind Celestia. He wasn't expecting her to show up out of the blue like that, but he's not complaining about it either. Ever since his talk with Luna, he's been worrying about Celestia. It's good to see that she's doing alright, and he hopes that the treats that he gave her will keep her day from getting dark. He turns back around and noticed all the ponies looking at him in awe. He rolls his eyes as he walks past them and towards Lyra. There's still so much that he needs to do today. The first thing that he needs to check on is all the cooks. Then he'll need to make sure that all the ingredients are stored properly and he remembers how disastrous the day was when some pony put the sugar in the flour bin. Not to mention that he has to package all the leftover candy to be sold at a discount for today. And to add to it, he'll have to get ready so he can have dinner with Celestia. Anon feels his entire body freeze up as his mind kicks into overdrive. Wait, if he goes to dinner, then... His body starts to shake some as it tries its hardest to suppress the sudden want to scream. Twilight. Twilight will be there. If he goes, then he'll have to see her. There's no way that he can somehow ignore her. He knows that she'll be there, examining him. Just waiting and watching, looking for any opportunity to experiment on him again. Lyra instantly notices Anon standing frozen in the center of the shop. Most of the ponies are standing there looking at him confused. Lyra turns to her current customer. One moment. She walks from behind the counter and up to Anon. Anon? He's not responding. Plus he has a rather distant look in his eyes. She's seen this one before. She needs to get him upstairs so he doesn't cause a scene. She gently takes his hand in her magic as she guides him to the stairs. Anon is on autopilot as he follows her lead without pause. Lyra gets him to her room and sits him onto her bed. Anon! She stands onto her hind hooves and places her fore hooves onto his knees so she can face him. Are you alright? He can't believe he agreed to see that pony. There has to be some way that he can get out of this. He knows that'll probably hurt Celestia, but he just can't stand the thought of seeing that pony right now. A sudden idea comes to his mind, a devious one, but it'll work. Sorry, Tia. He talks to himself. It seems that my cooks just weren't ready. I had to stay all night cleaning up their mess. In fact, I'll need to stay at the shop until the party. Lyra cocks her head slightly as she hears Anon mumbling to himself. She flinches back some as she feels something start to scratch her ear. She notices that Anon is now looking at her. That far off look in his eyes is gone. But that matters a little to her right now, seeing as she's reveling in the feeling of his hand scratching the back of her ear. Now that I think about it, it was rather rude of me to deny staying here at the shop when you and Bon Bon offered me a room. Lyra can't even answer she melts into his hand. I'll still be living at the castle, but I think I can stay here for a few nights. At least until we're done with training these ponies. Lyra nods her head dumbly. She doesn't even know what Anon is talking about. She's in her own world right now as she relishes in his touch. Sadly, he removes his hand from her. Lyra's mind is still cloudy as Anon gets up from the bed. I'll let Bon Bon know. Mm-hmm. She asks in a dreamy tone. I'm gonna let Bon Bon know I'll be staying here for a few days. Lyra snaps out of her daze as those words register into her mind. Anon is gonna be staying here? A big goofy smile appears on her face. You need to head back to the customers. I'll talk to Bon Bon. Anon says as he pats her head, before he walks out of her room. Lyra feels her body follow after him like a lovesick pup. She can't believe that Anon is gonna be sleeping in the same place as her. She feels herself stop in front of the register. All of the ponies in line flinch back some as they see her impossibly large smile. How may I help you? She shouts with excitement. Anon walks up to Bon Bon. He feels horrible for doing this, but deep down inside, he knows that he isn't ready to see that pony yet. He'll do anything in his power to avoid her, even if that means he has to hurt Celestia's feelings. Even that thought is enough to make him wince inside. But still, his fears are calling the shots right now. Hey, Bon Bon, is that invitation to stay here still open? Bon Bon quickly looks up from her paperwork towards Anon. What? Why now? Anon shrugs. It seems weird for me to walk all the way from the castles of the shops, so I might as well stay here until we're done teaching these guys. Bon Bon feels a brow raise. But we only have a few days until we're done. Anon nods. Yeah, it does seem odd, but what can I say? I'm an odd guy. Bon Bon doesn't feel right. She's getting a weird feeling that Anon isn't telling her what's really going on in his head. She's been getting pretty good at knowing how he feels lately. They've practically spent all hours of the day together thanks to the shop, so she knows something's wrong. But she doesn't know what it could be. Is that really the reason? She asks with a skeptical look. Anon doesn't want to lie, yet he doesn't want to tell her the truth either. It'll just make Bon Bon worry or worse, get overprotective. So it's best to just play around the idea and try to keep as much as he can to himself. There's no reason to drag her into this. 
I can assure you that my reasons for staying here are valid. There he goes again. He doesn't actually tell her what the problem is, but instead tells her that there's a reason for his actions. She shakes her head with a tired sigh. She honestly doesn't have a problem with him staying here, but she does have a problem if he's only doing it because he needs help. She worries. Ever since the Ponyville incident, she feels slightly responsible for not having noticed before Hoof. Yet she also knows that if he doesn't want her to know, then she can't force it out of him. <sighs> Alright. She relents. He smiles at her. That's one thing no longer on his mind. At least until he remembers what Celestia and him talked about earlier, he might as well let Bonbon bon know. Is it cool if I invite a few ponies to that party that you're throwing? Bonbon bon looks at him in disbelief. Anon, I wanted that party to be in between the three of us! Anon chuckles nervously as he rubs the back of his neck. Bonbon bon looks at him in a deadpan. <sighs> you invited ponies already, didn't you? He nods. I also might have moved it to the castle. Bonbon bon takes a slow breath in and lets it out. No need to get angry. It's not what she wanted, but due to the recent turn of events, it seems that changes can be made. She nods. Two parties. The original will now be thrown for all the ponies that you invited, but seeing as you're staying here, we'll throw our own personal party early. Bon Bon is pretty peeved with him right now, so Anand doesn't want to question why she wants to have a private party so much, but then again, having a smaller party just between the three of them does sound nice. It's a way to celebrate their success. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Anon agrees. Their attention is taken from them as the sound of something crashing is heard from the kitchen. Anon and Bon Bon look over to see Butterhoves on the floor with pots around him. Anon shakes his head. <sighs> what did I say about touching things? He shouts as he walks over to help the pony up. Thank you, and please come again. An enthusiastic shout is heard from the storefront. Bon Bon just shakes her head slowly as she looks down to her paperwork. She is getting too old for this stuff. Celestia walks into the throne room feeling brighter than ever. She didn't even care as she walked down the streets of Canterlot with a smile on her face. Her mood seemed to be affecting even the most shrewd noble that was to gaze upon her happiness. Luna was correct about seeing Anon. Celestia hasn't felt this good in months. She looks up to the throne to see her sister sitting there while Blue Blood talks to her. Is the moon really made of cheese? Blue Blood asks. Luna shakes her head with a smirk. Nay, I am surprised to know that the myth that I started a few millennia ago is still around. Over the past few months, Celestia has been pushing those two together, seeing as they never really spent time around each other. Blue Blood was rather indifferent to Luna, and Luna was the same towards Blue Blood. With a little time and patience, the two of them had found a liking in the other. It's not often, but the two of them do spend time together. Luna looks past Blue Blood, and towards the sound of some pony approaching. She can see that her sister is back, and even came bearing gifts. Blue Blood notices Luna looking past him. He turns around and finds that his auntie is back. Celestia walks up to the throne. She uses her magic to levitate Blue Blood's bag towards him. This is from Anon. Celestia tells him. Blue Blood smiles largely at that as he quickly takes the bag and looks inside. He gives off a childlike squeal of delight. Oh, my favorite! He says as he levitates a piece of chocolate out and into his mouth. Don't eat it all at once. Celestia warns as she walks up to her sister. How are things going? Luna smiles. Rather well. A few ponies have stopped by today. Nothing major, so they were quickly dealt with. Celestia nods. Anon has given us something to share. Luna's eyes sparkle a bit as Celestia levitates the bag between them. Luna opens the bag and quickly reaches inside with her magic. She pulls out something and brings it up so she can see what it is. The both of them feel their brows raise as they look at the piece Luna's holding. They move in closer to inspect it. What do you think it is? Celestia asks, and Luna shrugs. I am unsure. What Luna's holding in her magic looks like a simple ball of chocolate. Why would Anon give them something like this? Celestia was expecting something experimental. Luna decides to take a leap of faith as she pops the piece into her mouth. Her eyes light up as she takes her first bite. Oh, it's filled with caramel! She says, having not expected that. Celestia reaches into the bag and pulls out a piece for herself to eat. Her eyes light up as she finds very little resistance from the chocolate. It breaks apart and she can taste the caramel trapped inside. She was not expecting something so simple and yet so surprising. She will admit that she's in love with this. Both Luna and Celestia reach into the bag for another, and then another. Doesn't take long for the two of them to finish off the bag. In fact, they look rather sick. Remember, Auntie? Blue Blood speaks in his royal voice. It's best to eat in moderation. Celestia chuckles at that. I couldn't help myself. Blue Blood nods. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. He leans his head back and pours his entire bag into his mouth as he slowly chews every last piece and swallows it whole. He licks his lips and rises from the floor and walks towards the door. I'm gonna spend some time with the animals. Be careful! Celestia calls out. 
Soon, both sisters are left alone in the throne room. It was very sweet of Anon to give us a present, Luna says. I must say I enjoyed that, Celestia admits. The both of them clean themselves a bit. Celestia magics a small hooker shift to clean her muzzle, while Luna simply licks it off. Celestia shakes her head with a smile as she notices that Luna missed a spot. She rolls her eyes as she floats over her hooker chip and cleans her face. Sister! Luna squabbles a bit. I am a crone mare, not some filly. Well, I can't let you walk around the castle with chocolates in your fur. Celestia finishes her job. Done. Luna is leering at her as she uses her hoof to wipe her muzzle again. I am a capable mare. Luna says. What if one of our subjects saw this? Celestia rolls her eyes. If Anon has taught me anything, it's that we shouldn't worry so much about what our subjects think. Changing for the better is always a nice thing, no doubt about that. Now let's head on over to our super sweet donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Twinkie. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Color 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will, Chris, Dospo, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.